This is a truck. It has a curb weight, which is how heavy the truck is by itself. Each vehicle has a specification about how much weight it can carry. That's called the Gross Vehicle Weight Rating, or GVWR. The difference between what the truck weighs by itself and the GVWR is its payload capacity. In the US, the payload capacity is given on a sticker inside the door. It looks like this. On this truck sticker, the payload capacity is listed as 1,660 pounds. Everything you put in the truck counts as cargo. People, pets, and cargo items like luggage or camping gear. Let's say this is the sticker for this truck. You have 500 pounds of people, pets, and gear that you want to carry. That means you could put 1,660 minus 500 or 1,160 pounds of cargo in, which is about 72 16-pound bowling balls. It works the same way with a travel trailer. They have curb weights and GVWRs, and the difference between the two is the trailer's payload capacity, or how much stuff you can store in the trailer. The trailers also have a tire and loading information label that gives their payload capacity. The one on the left here has 3,674 pounds of payload, and the one on the right has 1,207 pounds of payload. When I was shopping for a truck and a trailer, the payload capacity of the truck was the hardest to satisfy. For a truck, the options reduce the payload capacity. The 4x4 is heavier, the crew cab is heavier, and other options on the truck make it even heavier. The websites give a payload capacity, but my experience was that I couldn't find trucks with that number on the lots. I was looking for a 4x4 crew cab, and the ones I could find on the lots had a payload capacity of about 1,500 to 1,800 pounds, so I really think you just have to check the sticker on the door. For towing a trailer, the truck's payload capacity is really important because the hitch weight of the trailer counts as part of the payload. The hitch weight of each trailer model is listed on the manufacturer's websites. Let's look at some. Grand Design is easy to find. They list the hitch weight of all the models right there on the floor plan display. On these transcends, the hitch weight ranges from 480 pounds for the 200MK up to 775 pounds for the 321BH. This is Airstream's site, where if you drill down far enough, they have the spec comparison page. This is the Flying Cloud model comparison, where the hitch weight ranges from 500 pounds for the 23FB up to 899 pounds for the 30RB. This is Jayco, where the hitch weights are a little harder to find, but this 264BH model is listed with a hitch weight of 500 pounds. Once you load items into a trailer, some of it will end up being extra hitch weight. I've seen an estimate of 10 to 15% of the total trailer weight being hitch weight, but you'll have to decide for yourself how you want to estimate it. If you had the trailer in the truck, you could go to a scale and measure it exactly, but that doesn't really help when you're shopping. Let's go back to the Grand Design website and look at the Transcend Explorer 297 QB, which has an unloaded weight of 7,190 pounds and an unloaded hitch weight of 749 pounds. Its maximum loaded weight is 8,995 pounds, and using the 10 to 15% estimate, the max loaded hitch weight would be somewhere between about 900 and 1,350 pounds. Going back to the truck that had 1,160 pounds of payload capacity left, in that case it's iffy that the truck has enough payload capacity for this trailer when it's fully loaded. It's close. If you already have the truck, you might want to consider a different trailer. Or if you really wanted that trailer, you might want to think about a different tow vehicle. There's a couple of other numbers to be aware of. The hitch of the truck has a capacity. You might see in here about class 2, class 3, and class 4 hitches. Sometimes pre-installed hitches have a label giving the limits of them. A quick search for hitch sticker shows a variety of them. Some vehicles call out a difference if your trailer has a weight distribution hitch, and those can be installed on a trailer after purchase. The hitch weight, or tongue weight, of the trailer has to be less than the number on the hitch itself. One more number is the truck's towing capacity, which is how heavy can a towed trailer be? The truck needs to have enough towing capacity for the trailer's max weight, or GVWR. The truck's towing capacity can be found in the maker's towing guide. Ford and Chevy both have a towing guide which you can easily find with a web search. Looking at the F-150 section, 
The towing capacity is given for every engine, cab, bed length, and axle ratio combination. Finally, the truck has a maximum weight of the whole truck and trailer combined, and that's called the Gross Combined Vehicle Weight Rating, or GCVWR. Sometimes they leave the V out and call it the GCWR. If you take the max weight of the truck, its GVWR, and the max weight of the trailer, which is its GVWR, those two added together should be less than the combined weight rating. In my experience, truck salesmen aren't very educated about payload capacity. If you ask one, can this truck tow a 25-foot travel trailer, they'll be all, sure, that's no problem. But depending on the trailer's GVWR, it's likely that the numbers won't work out for a half-ton truck. We found that salesmen were willing to send pictures of the payload capacity stickers so we could know for sure. Thanks for watching. This just scratches the surface of this topic and there's a lot more to learn. So check the links in the description to other videos on the topic.